Let's look at how to translate a finite state machine diagram with the circles and the arrows into code that's actually working and running on your robot. So uh, the easiest way to proceed at this point is to look at the code attack library examples. And there is an example, library, example program called five underscore states.ino. I'm going to use this example uh, to create my example project. And I'll show you also on the same screen this uh, finite state machine. So the idea is, um, well, this is the prairie dog one. We don't want the prairie dog one. There we go. Uh, the idea behind this program is that you've got a robot, and it has an ultrasonic sensor in the front. Now, it wants to wait until the way is clear in front of it, because the ultrasonic sensor will see if there's an object and how far away that object is. And then if there's nothing in front of the robot, it will start driving forward. If there is something in front of the robot, as it's driving forward, then it's going to go back to waiting and stop the motors. So a couple things to remember. Remember that uh, we're only checking to see whether or not something is in the way of the robot when the robot is actually driving. And we're only checking to see whether or not the way is clear, not while we're driving, but when we're in the waiting state. So how do we do this? Well, uh, we have a special variable written here called state. And uh, you don't have to know too, many, too much about the details of this particular variable. It's what's called a function pointer. But it allows us to uh, basically create a variable that represents a function. So inside of our loop, we're always going to call the state function. And that state function can point to a different state. Each of the circles in our diagram is going to be represented by its own state function. So what does a state function look like? Well, I have this section called state functions. And you'll notice that I have a void waiting function and a void driving function. So those are my two states that I want to implement. Now, how do I transition from state to state? Well, the first question is, what am I doing inside of an individual state? If I'm in the waiting state, that means the robot should not be moving. Therefore, in the waiting state, you'll notice that we've called the stop function so that regardless of what the motors were doing before, in the waiting state, the motors are stopped. Now we need to check to see if there's something in front of the robot. So we'll use a variable and use the ultrasonic sensor to read the distance of what the ultrasonic sensor is telling us. If that distance is greater than 150 centimeters, that probably means there's nothing in front of the robot. Therefore, because there's nothing in front of the robot, we want to transition to a different state. To do that, it's pretty easy. All we have to do is say that the current state gets the name of the new state. And notice that there are not curly brace or, or not parentheses next to it. We don't have these parentheses at all. We don't want that at all. We just want the name of the state. Because this is a function pointer, it just has to refer to a specific state uh, and by, by its name. Now, you also notice that I've got a particle.publish thing here. And that's so that when those state trans transitions happen, I can look inside of the dashboard and see them happening. So uh, that's my waiting state. Now, if I look at my driving state, it looks very, very similar. In the driving state, we want the robot to be actually driving. So what it's going to do is move forward. Notice that we're going to go ahead and take another distance reading again. This time, if we think that there's the, the distance reading is less than 50 centimeters, that means there's probably something sitting in front of the robot. Since there's something in the way, we want to go ahead and transition to a different state again. So all we have to do is reassign state to the other state that we're returning to, which is waiting. You can continue to add new states like this if you wanted to and alter it to fit the finite state machine diagram. Now, a couple other nuts and bolts that are actually pretty important. The first thing is, uh, because these functions actually refer to each other, the way C++ works is that it compiles from top down. And that means that you can't refer to a function until it's been written. So this is kind of weird because we're referring to the driving function before the driving function is written. Therefore, we have a little bit of a hack. Up at the top, I have something called function prototypes. And this is really just a promise to the C++ compiler that we're going to write these functions at some point. And so it's safe to use these functions, and they will actually get written at some point. A function prototype looks like the name of the function, 
But you'll notice that instead of curly braces with the function definition and what it does, it just has a semicolon. So that's what the prototype looks like for an individual state function. And I have uh, function prototypes for all of the other things that I'm using as well, for example, forward, left, right, and stop, although those are probably less necessary since they're being used in these functions and will already be defined if we're going from top down. Now, the last thing is you'll notice that here I have this uh, assignment statement. It says state is equal to waiting. Because I'm inside, inside of the setup function, I, I need to actually assign what is the first state. So in my diagram, because the arrow is over here representing that the first state is waiting, when the setup function is run, I just say that the state is waiting. So let's take a look at what's happening on the dashboard when this uh, pro program runs. Uh, I flashed it to the robot. And as it comes online, you'll notice that the first event is that it's in the waiting state. And my ultrasonic sensor is pointed towards an object, so therefore it's waiting until there's nothing in front of it. We're in the waiting state. Now, if I turn the ultrasonic sensor so that it's no longer pointed at an object, but that it's clear, then all of a sudden, you'll notice that it makes a state transition to driving because the distance is greater than 150 centimeters now, it's now driving. If I point it back towards an object, like it's going to run into a wall, it immediately transitions back into the waiting state and then the robot stops. So that's how you can build relatively complex behavior from your finite state machine in an easy fashion. Uh, so that's why programmers like finite state machines. It's easy to define the behaviors you can even test them out in real life if you're trying to solve a problem. And then it's pretty easy to translate them uh, with very little code.